For this next trick, I'll need a volunteer. This, vo <laughs> <laughs> this volunteer could really be anybody. <laughs> anybody at all. Thank you for making the choice to volunteer. Didn't even see you there. Thank you for making the choice to come on. Come on. Thank you for making the choice to volunteer because you see that's what this is all about. Choice. In 1964, Edward Lorenz popularized the term the butterfly effect, which essentially means that every choice we make, no matter how seemingly small, can affect the world dramatically. The flap of a butterfly's wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas. The choices we make are all around us. You have chosen to be here today. You have chosen to put on clothes, and you have chosen to be my volunteer. Now, my volunteer friend, I have in my possession a deck of cards, excuse me, deck of manuscripts, and each of these manuscripts contains a different poem about choice. Now, communication scholar Christian Coick states in the 2009 March Journal of Argumentation of Journal of Journal of Argumentation and Debate that rhetoric is the social practice which helps us choose. In order to illustrate this, I'll need you to select five of these cards and help me argue that what influences us the most is the act of choice. So pick carefully. Because <laughs> how you pick could throw off my whole round. The Virgin Bride by Mark Sandman. Puppy Little Shoes by Chris Taylor. <laughs> 99 Red Balloons by Kevin McKayla. Being a Star Captain by Cornmo. <laughs> and 40 Housewives. Woo! <laughs> this program, well selected, will start tornadoes. Do I want cream? <laughs> or do I want butter? <laughs> Milk and cheese are what I know. If there's a chance, I could make cream cheese. Slice <laughs> it up to be the guys. Time's not on my side. These seconds are today's. Wasted school years. Waiting on drugs. Getting high. <laughs> now the butter lasts longer than the cream. I make cream from the butter I'd have. <laughs> and will this ship lose another staple if I don't make a decision now? Being a star captain's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> My life is better than it was. TV nights. Watching TV. Waste away the mind and the dummy forgets what it's hungry for. Do I want cream? Do I want butter? You and I are in this little toy shop. We buy a bag of balloons with the money we've got. And we set them free at the break of dawn until one by one they're gone. But back at base, bugs in the flat software flash the message, something's out there. Floating in the summer sky, 99 red balloons go by. Panic bells, it's red alert. There's something here from somewhere else. The war machine springs to life, opening up one big eager eye and focusing it on the sky as 99 red balloons go by. 99 decision street, 99 ministers meet to worry, worry, super scurry, call the troops out in a hurry. This is what we waited for. This is it, boys. This is war. The president is on the line as 99 red balloons go by. all over. I'm standing pretty in this dust that was a city. If I could find a souvenir just to prove that the world was here. Here it is. A red balloon. I think of you. Let it go.
big hammer, mud ball breaking my bones, <laughs> a soft shoulder salamander up close in the one. If I had my choice between those two, <laughs> I picked the one with the shoes. Little chicken sitting on my plate. Big skinny skinhead. He's up to here with hate. <laughs> if I had my choice between those two, yeah, I'd go with the one with the puppy little shoes. Is <laughs> 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 a joke for kill? The band? It was just a couple of summers ago when Annie met Gary. They moved to each other so in love. But Annie, she made a choice. So she wanted Gary to wait to do it until their wedding day. And Gary said, all right, that's OK, Annie. I can wait. But let's get married right away. <laughs> And soon enough, that wedding day rolled around, and it was a very, very beautiful wedding. You know the kind. And after the wedding, there was a big reception back at Annie's mother's house. There was a band, there was food, there was so much love in the air. Annie, Annie grabbed a bottle of champagne. She grabbed Gary by the hand, and they stuck away. She took him downstairs, down to the basement, down in the laundry room. <clears throat> rolling around in the laundry, down in the laundry room, rolling around, rolling around, rolling around, rolling around in the laundry, down in the laundry room, rolling around, rolling around, rolling around, rolling around. And Gary hit his head on the dryer. He hit it pretty hard. In fact, Gary's dead. And if she hadn't waited, then she couldn't say, the virgin bride is the virgin widow today. Forty housewives start out that day. No, nope. They just got up and went. West, the direction of choice. Some of them held pies out in front of them, like divining rod, rods of freedom. They meant to put the pies on the windowsill to cool, but for some reason, they just kept on going. By now, those pies were so cool, they smoldered. They were red hot, brother. <laughs> 500 housewives, no longer just blondes, brunettes, and redheads, marched through Birmingham. They cast their calendars off some miles back. Through Casper and Cheyenne and Des Moines and Fort Wayne, they marched, gaining strength, gaining calm. Kids holding sticks and dogs and men with bellies lined what seemed to be their path. The men just stood there as if to say, honey, what's for dinner? <laughs> the men didn't realize that there would be no hot dinner. <laughs> not even a soup and sandwich. <laughs> Kathy's not cooking. Not this good Eve, fat boy. Because <laughs> tonight, the dinner tables had really turned. By the time they reached the ocean, they were 5,000 housewives strong with that crazed ferret look in their eyes. <laughs> Holding hands as their tired feet creased the moonlit waters, they paused and looked back from where they came as if to say, 